This is an open letter to the city of Los Angeles and a call to action for our community, inspired by the lack of oversight on an irresponsible construction project. The mindset allowing this project to proceed despite numerous egregious violations of the law and the Hillside Ordinance needs to change. Our community wants answers to the questions posed in this video. The problem. A three-story, 42-foot by 56-foot add-on with a deck and swimming pool at 8407 Grandview Drive in Laurel Canyon. This is my house right here, 8417 Grandview. And I was uh, subjected to uh, four years of misery by this uh, builder uh, at 8401 Grandview from the years 2006 to 2010. His crane uh, was going down the street, couldn't stop it, and he used my retaining wall as a stop to stop his crane. Destroyed the front of my property, a lot of damage out there, cracked wall, cracked driveway, knocked down my rail, uh, no efforts to repair any of it. A lot of it I had to repair myself. All the rats from this hillside came running down the hill to my house the last time they did construction here. It went on and on and on. I would like to know how someone could bring a 15-ton backhoe in, break down the guardrails, bring it up the street without padding, and have every department in the city involved in this drop the ball. We need to know, because this is such a small street and such a small neighborhood, we need some warning of when construction is happening. There were no signs put up, no warnings, no permits posted. He's got less to lose doing things wrong than he has doing things right. We need to change that here in Los Angeles. People that do things wrong need to be punished and made an example of. There is nobody there to advise you. You just get a piece of paper and you finally say, well, I guess there's nothing I can do. That isn't the way we expect to be protected. Somebody should have stopped this guy way before he got started, and that's the problem. And what we would like to see is the city change its manner of doing business in issues like this. But up the hill, the dirt has already been removed on an empty lot on Grandview Drive. The builder says not to worry. They replaced the uh, the dirt with uh, you know cement and steel structure, so that uh, shortened it, it up. Yeah, it's actually it would be much better than uh, what it was before. And on this day, Councilman Weiss issues a stop work order for builder Michael, Michael Smith's property. Mr. Smith was listed as the owner slash builder of 8401 Grandview, the property that is to be added onto. He's never lived in that house. He sold it and no longer owns the property. Mr. Smith's permit was issued in error and was revoked. How did Mr. Smith obtain a permit and begin construction without fulfilling all of the requirements of that permit? Why was Mr. Smith allowed to drive a 15-ton backhoe on a substandard street with no safety measures? Why was Mr. Smith allowed to destroy city property? Why was there no oversight or enforcement of the law? We want answers. This is Mr. Smith's multi-ton backhoe sitting in the rain directly above homes on the street below. This is what happened the last time Mr. Smith placed a backhoe on the same slope in 2007. Hannah Meltzer is considering moving out of the canyon, too nervous that a caterpillar clinging to a hillside could slip one day and smash into her home, possibly killing her two young sons. And I've seen some plans on a geo report that was they were supposed to comply with certain things, and they haven't. It's very mm. difficult to live like that. It's difficult to function. I'm sorry. No, it's awful. Hannah moved. This is what is happening now in 2012. That's my house, straight down the hill there, and there's a backhoe with no protective fencing. If we have an earthquake, if we have a heavy rain, I'm afraid that backhoe ends up in my bedroom. And I kind of like this face. I really don't want to see what it looks like when it gets hit by a backhoe. Please don't let this guy do this again. 
This is the damage Mr. Smith caused in less than three hours. The substandard road is back all cracked. It had just been repaired by the city to repair the damage Mr. Smith caused the last time he built here. As you can see where he knocked down, the first day they came up, they took down the guardrail, okay? That's city property. Three weeks after repairs were completed, he destroyed the street again. He covered up the cracks in the street to make it appear as if there was no new damage. We want to know how all this was allowed to happen. We've identified three things that need to be corrected immediately to prevent what is happening at 8407 from happening again here or in any other hillside community. Anyone asking for an exemption on substandard hillside streets should have to go through an extensive hearing process. No verbal clearances or backroom adjustments. Any deviation from code in the hill should require a hearing with no exceptions. Planning conditions must be strictly enforced. Notification should not be an arbitrary decision made by someone sitting at a desk. It should include every property and parcel within a 500 foot radius. Hall routes and hearing notifications should be sent to everyone on the entire street affected, especially on substandard streets in the hills. Notification should not be limited to the import and export of soils. They should also include cement trucks, multi-axle vehicles, and heavy equipment. Start doing it. Agencies involved in this construction project fail to identify and enforce existing laws and mandates governing building in the hills and the destruction of city property. We'd like to see the penalties and fines for violations significantly strengthened and increased, as well as enforced rigorously. The money from the fine should be used to repair damage caused by scofflaw developers. It is time for us to stand up for our rights and the rule of law. We want our civic leaders, and in particular, the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety, to change their way of doing business and how they operate. Everyone has a right to build on private property. They do not have the right to do it illegally. Call, write, and email your council members and demand the changes we've outlined. They are policy and can be changed quickly. Since this video was shot, council member Paul Koretz of CD5 has introduced a proposal for a condition compliance unit. We wholeheartedly endorse it. Directly below this video on the YouTube page is information about the proposal, a form letter, and links to request a condition compliance unit paid for by the violators. Cut and paste the form letter and submit it to the email addresses provided. It will take you only 10 minutes to make your voice heard by your city leaders. We're not as hell and we want answers!